It's Feedback Gaming. Today, going to be a short tutorial on how to do Operation Barbarossa. Okay, so a lot of people are probably thinking to yourself, hang on a second, Operation Barbarossa is, is a piece of piss, to be honest with you. All you got to do is grab your huge, huge German army and tell them to move into Russian territory. Yeah, I guess so. I guess I'm trying to give a different angle to it, a way of making it easier. I suppose that's kind of like the superior firepower way of doing it. You just line up loads of really fat divisions and move into the Soviet Union. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a demonstration, maybe something a little bit different, maybe something historical. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, so I'm going to push north uh, with my first tank division, which is here. And push north towards Leningrad. And then we've got a southern division here, which we're pushing towards Kiev and like maybe central Ukraine. And then we've got our main force, which is over the full front, which is pushing directly towards Moscow down the center. What we're initially gonna do is push all three divisions. You'll find that the tank divisions, oh, that's actually a home division, they're reserves actually. Uh, there's a tank division here, which consists of mainly of medium tanks and mobilized artillery, mobilized, sorry, motorized transports, and more motorized infantry. And then you've got the southern one here, which is going to thrust towards the south. The whole idea is you're going to create a bulge in the center, which you'll be able to swerve in and push in with your tank division towards Moscow, as well as the southern one towards Moscow, creating this big bulge in the middle of, I don't know, I guess it would be Belarus, wouldn't it? And that's the that's basically the concept, really. And a good idea is to grab some also some divisions as in reserve as well, just in the end since you get hit by uh, a naval landing, maybe from the UK or the Allies, and you've also got some reserves, some military police to use whenever you need them, and you can cover this area as well. Another good thing to do as well is make sure you've got lots of infrastructure. The big issues you're probably going to find that you're not going to make mistakes with is that, as you imagine, the Germans had trouble. The Germans had trouble with in, uh, logistics, so you're going to have that problem. So you're going to build lots of lots of roads. And I feel you're not going to have that issue. I know this didn't happen historically, but Romania, we declared war on them. And Bulgaria and uh, Hungary, we took land from them. And to make sure that my uh, attack into the Soviet Union is nice and smooth, I asked for this territory of Hungary, so therefore we can have a nice landing platform. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to declare war now. I'm going to go. And uh, they've all built up the planning bonus, so the attack should be relatively smooth. And here they go. Oh no, we have broken the pact. And that's pretty much it, to be honest with you guys. You'll notice that there'll be an attack here that'll push really further forward really quickly. A southern front, shall we say, that'll push front f further front really quickly as well. And then the middle front will kind of move very, very slowly. That's because it's just the main infantry force, which it doesn't have as much oomph as it moves in. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. And uh, yeah, so you, you ideally, I mean, you've got different ways of doing this. I mean, you can try and create as many fronts as possible. I don't know, maybe you can try to create a front in Crimea, around the Caucasus area, by going through Turkey. Maybe you can create one here by doing amphibious landing here. Or maybe you can push through Scandinavia and try and attack the, the Russians through here as well. Uh, and then on top of that off, you can do some power drops if you want to. Just try and create multiple fronts, try and split up the large Soviet army. Or otherwise, you can do a big army with lots of firepower, like a classic superior firepower where you're going to push all the way in with lots of infantry and tanks with not a lot of strategy, just a lot of firepower. You could do that. Or you could try and do what I'm doing and do more of a strategy kind of thing where you push in and try and make a bulge. And therefore, when the bulge forms, you can uh, try and encircle them. So you can kind of see we're pushing to Ukraine quite easy. Why? Because it's just lowlands. A few rivers, that's a few issues, but that's pretty much it. The north is a bit slower because all the fo forests. And the center is not any different, to be fair. It's kind of a mixture between... Actually, no, I tell a lie. There's lots of marshlands here. So you are going to get bogged down in this area. So ideally, you'd want to push towards here. And uh, in fact, ideally, you'd want them to kind of be encircled into this kind of area in the center. I never actually realized there's actually quite a lot of marshes in the center of this area, isn't there? I never realized that. Okay. Anyway, so we're doing this incredibly well here. So what we can probably do is tell them to stop, make a small front here, and push northwards here. And then the same thing here. We're not being as successful here, but we'll still create a front here and we'll meet up here. So what you can see, if you look really closely, is we're trying to form a front here. So I've not told them to go straight away because I want them to repair their divisions, which they are doing, and also, well, reinforce. And also, in the same time, I also want to uh, build up some planning bonus, which they are doing. 
And as you can see, I'm still pushing with my main infantry arm to kind of keep um, all the German, so all the Russian divisions held and pinned in place. So, all right, ready to go now, and we're going to go. And you can see straight away they'll make the breakthrough and they'll form some holes. Now, this is a very, very large bulge, to be fair. So, it maybe, maybe you'd want to go for something a lot smaller. Um, yeah, maybe I didn't push as much in the north as I would have liked. Because you can see the south's really punched through, but the, the north's struggling. And the center, to be fair, hasn't moved that much either. A good idea to keep an eye on your logistics as well. We're having a little bit of a trouble with motorized, so you might want to keep the motorized pumping. Uh, get another line of motorized going. And replace any of these. Yeah, probably should replace some tanks and we can pump out some more motorized in the time being so be aware that motorized are used for a lot of your uh, support brigades so it will reduce their efficiency of kind of reinforcing troops as well as casualties and what they for field hospitals so it is a good idea to keep them pumping and keep going and plus it makes your tank divisions a lot weaker as well particularly these ones because they've got uh, motorized infantry built in with them as well it is it is 10 yeah it's good combat with a nice 10 division and see, we're really struggling here, but here we're having just absolutely tons of success. So it might be a good idea to push them towards the Baltic Sea here. As you can see, as they're moving in, their front line gets bigger. So you can tell that's a really successful push because you can see that the front line is getting really thick. Now, I want to do my absolute best to try and avoid them pushing towards this swamp area. We've taken Kiev, which is good. So you can kind of see here as the tank divisions pushed in, it's kind of made a bulge. Um, I am attacking the Soviets at a lot later period in 1943 as well. So this is a lot trickier than it would usually be. The longer you leave the Soviet Union, the more divisions they can create. So it causes more issues. And right now they're incredibly strong. Are they being invaded by Japan? No, they're not. So I am fighting them single-handedly right now. Are they at war with anyone else? Yep, they're just at war with us, that we're the only ones. Just a few uh, engagements with our convoys, just to bring in resources. And that's pretty much it, guys. As you can probably see, the, the troops here are forming into a bulge. Uh, I realise that our front line there is completely wrong. Yeah, that's gone completely wrong. I don't know what's happened there. Yeah, I want you guys to be here. Oh, shit. And you go here. Yep, and then you go here. There we go. Yeah, for some really weird reason, they're pushing in here. That's not good, actually, because we want to make sure that we push them in the right areas. Now, you're probably thinking, why do you want to use this army to push in the main, kind of, uh, your main field marshal? The reason why you want to do that is so it pins them in. As you can see, there's a, there's a fight happening here and here and here. And all these fights are keeping the troops all pinned in place. So what that will do is it gives you an advantage. Therefore, you can use your tank divisions and not have them kind of constantly fighting the enemy troops over and over and over again so you can move in in here you can tell you just rip them apart and the tank divisions are just insanely strong and you see they've moved in as well because their front line's got a lot bigger as well if you want to correct that and make the, the front push a lot easier you can make the front smaller there and make a, a nice little push in there. Also, if you want to do the swing that I aim for, trying to avoid rivers is always a good idea as well. And go. Made a nice little pocket here, which is kind of cool. You can see that the, the pocket is forming exactly where I wanted it to, right in this area. So we're going to really struggle to push into this area because marshes are as bad as mountains when it comes down to making offensive attacks. And also it's kind of good because it builds up lots of attrition when they're stuck in this area. So the longer we can keep them stuck there, the better. Uh, we probably don't want those to be aggressive. Just hold ground for now. So we're having sh issues with supply equipment too, which is probably going to have a knock-on effect as well on our... Um, 
the effectiveness of our support battalion, so that's something to keep an eye on. Anyway, guys, this is pretty much the end of the campaign. You pretty much get the gist of what I'm trying to do here. Um, the only issue you're going to find is, because I'm trying to make such a ferociously large pocket here, is eventually you're going to burn out our supplies, which is going to hurt you in the long run. So, I don't know, is this a scenario of uh, the Battle of Kursk? I, can, can we make the pocket in uh, Kursk so we can take back uh, the Soviet land? I don't know. Maybe we can. Maybe we can. I don't know. We're going to find out. But anyway, that's the issue. You can find that supply is going to start to become a problem. That's the reason why it's best to get your objectives done as soon as you can. Probably get a big surplus of equipment is a good idea. I don't know. Motorized and supply equipment always seem to become an issue when you become later into the game. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. If you've enjoyed this kind of tutorial series, leave a comment, a like, and whatnot. Apart from that, guys, that's pretty much it. I'm done. I'll see you guys soon. Have a good night. Bye-bye.